We continue to monitor the conflict in Israel. NBC's Kelly Kobiea is live from Tel Aviv with the very latest on the ground. Good morning, Kelly. Carl, good morning to you. Yeah, and we have a developing situation in the north of the country now. The Israeli Defense Force saying that they uh, killed a number of militants who crossed the border from Lebanon into Israel just a short time ago. Uh, Hezbollah has already reacted to this, saying it wasn't them. They have not started any sort of ground invasion in the north, but the Israeli military uh, active in the north now and telling people uh, to shelter in place there. This, as the military continues what they call is an extensive operation in the south, in Gaza. They say that they're hitting a number of Hamas operational centers in Gaza. Uh, we know after this unprecedented attack over the weekend that uh, hundreds are dead, uh, 260 killed at that music festival alone. Some people are missing. We don't know how many family members have said that they have simply lost track of their relatives after uh, the chaos at that music festival with uh, militants opening fire and taking people hostage. And there is also grave concern now for civilians in Gaza as these military operations continue. Tens of thousands of people have taken shelter in schools in Gaza, according to the United Nations. And there is also an unknown number of captives taken from Israel into Gaza over the past, uh, over the weekend, uh, and their whereabouts and their well-being is unknown. Today, Hamas is claiming that at least four of those captors were killed, captives, excuse me, were killed along with their Hamas captors in some of these strikes on, on Gaza. Uh, Israel is warning against uh, taking that uh, at its word, uh, and we simply can't verify whether any of these hostages have been killed we, we, because we're, quite frankly, because we're not on the ground there and we've seen no video proof of it. But certainly things are continuing to evolve very quickly here in Israel. Carl. Kelly, thank you for that. Uh, Kelly Kobier of NBC from Tel Aviv will continue to monitor it with, uh, with your help. Jim, uh, stateside, there is a view that maybe this does add urgency to the race for House Speaker. Get that settled. Maybe Jack Lew's confirmation. Maybe you combine Ukraine and Israeli uh, military aid. Yeah, I, I think that we're, we're kind of, we were convinced just to, last week that therefore there'd be no action that can take place for a while. This does lend certain urgency to it. Uh, I think we're, many people were surprised that Ukraine aid was the one that was really on the chopping block. Uh, at the same time, there's a split in the country about whether Ukraine should be helped. And I think this, the split is more related to why don't the Europeans do more? And there's no answer to why the Europeans would do more based on what we do, since they are rigorously independent of pretty much anything we said. Although to be fair on Ukraine, I think they are they are actually contributing a good amount. Under, and it's not clear well, to me that there really is a full division. You are talking about certain parts of the Republican Party in particular. Right. Well, I mean the parts of the Republican they Party may not are be against. reflective overall of sentiment in the country no, as no, a whole. No, absolutely. It, no, I mean again. I don't I, know, I, I, but I'm that's expressing my sense. That, that they were able to block it, which I thought was pretty well, amazing. Well, eight. Republicans. Well, but I'm just saying, I mean, like, prevented Kevin I think McCarthy that, from, and obviously all the Democrats voting together. Well, I, look, I think there was a time when it would be shocking that anyone would think that you would take the side of of nothing, of neutrality, right. in a war where but there's Carl's a sworn point, enemy. It doesn't, it doesn't help this sense of just things sort of being Wait, a bit out of control when we don't have a Speaker of the House right, right now. Right. It's unclear what can or can't be voted on in terms of aid, whether it's to Israel or to Kiev. Uh, and so, well, it did feel yes. like that until this happened, it was okay. I mean, the usual chaos was going to be tolerated, right? I mean, would long-term yield suggest that? That's been the debate. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, uh, Neil Ferguson with a great piece in Bloomberg talking about that this is the unintended consequences, and it could be really bad. I don't think anyone feels confident about how the government had uh, financed for the longest time. Look, the go U.S. government. I'm just. I'm still waiting for the Moody's downgrade. I mean, if I were Moody's, I would say, look, I, you know, I know that they're, I know that they're risk-free. At the same time, 
there is a Jiminy Cricket nature to it that I think most Americans are kind of ashamed by. Right. You mentioned sort of the heartless nature of trying to pick sectors in this world right now, yeah. but defense is an interesting story in that you would expect uh, there, there to be some aid, but there's still the spending debate. Is right. that an obvious play? Well, look, I look. Do, do the Israelis need tanks? It's General Dynamics. I mean, I, I, I think that the problem there is, is that we were supposed to be full out anyway because of Ukraine. I think that we've held back uh, many things that we could give the, U the Ukrainians, uh, but they may not be needed in this kind of war.